If you want a build that's a little bit out of the ordinary but still gives you everything that you need for a survival base, then the Aqua Snail is the build for you, so don't go anywhere. Here's the materials for the Aqua Snail build. If you wanted to switch the copper out for something cheaper, you could use the granite as the base block and then use the jungle wood and the exposed copper as the accent. The dimensions for the snail are 30 blocks long by 13 blocks wide, and that will be 18 blocks tall. Starting at the back of the build, we're gonna place ourselves a line diagonally in each direction of three of the slabs and this is the exposed waxed copper and we're then going to skip one and come out further on each side like this now using some stairs we're going to place a stair in either of these directions so going this way and then going this way then a stair and three more on each side so one stair facing this way and then three more making that curl round next we're going to take some full blocks place two on each side this will leave a gap of three and place ourselves one stair facing into the build. Now we're going to have some more blocks, one, two and three blocks coming out this way, then one, two blocks here and two here, two here and two here just like so. Next we're going to place seven stairs, so one stair going this way, one, two, three, four, five going this way and one curving round and the same on the other side, so one, one, two, three, four, five and then one curving round. Then next to that, we're going to place one, two, three, four, five, six blocks each side with two blocks just on the inside of that. And then two stairs coming out of this center section. We're then going to leave a gap and place two blocks here and two blocks here. And going around the front, place a stair on the corner and a stair just in front. Stair on the corner just in front. And then on one, two, the second block, we're going to place a stair with two slabs. And then the same on the other side, one, two, and then a stair with a slab each side. Now we're going to fill in the floor. And in this back section, up to and including in between these stairs, this is going to be some dark oak planks. In this middle section, up to and including these stairs, we're going to have some gravel. And then in the front, up to and including between these two blocks, we're going to have some more dark oak. So fill all of those in. In the tail section, we are going to place a bed here in the middle with an ender chest and a jukebox either side of it. Then next to the jukebox, we've got a smoker and a crafting table here with a double chest on each side like this. Then in the center section, we're going to have two double chests this end, two double chests this end, and then three more chests in the two sides like this. In this section, we're gonna have ourselves an enchanting setup. So we're gonna have two and two bookshelves and then one, two, three with three on top of the bookshelves on each side. In the middle here, we have our enchanting table. And then in this gap, we're gonna put a stone cutter. For the next section at the back, we're gonna place a block next to the bed. We're gonna place one next to each of these chests. Then we're gonna place three slabs on the three sides of this block that we placed at the back. And we're going to place a stair here, a stair here, one stair shift clicking on top of the uh, smoker, one stair on top of our crafting bench. And now we need a couple of temporary blocks. So we need one temporary block just here and one on the other side. And that is so upside down, we can place a stair on either side. We can then get rid of these. We can then also place some stairs above the chests that are upside down like this. Some more upside down stairs in this space. We are gonna place ourselves a rail at the bottom here to hold back some water and then a jungle trap door on this block. What I'm gonna do is just place that the other way so we get a nicer look to it. At the front of the snail, we are gonna place ourselves a door just here. Either side of the door, we've got two of the full blocks. We're then gonna place three blocks at the back of these bookshelves. And we're gonna place ourselves two blocks just here and two blocks just here. Now for some stairs, we have a stair going this way and this way, one coming in here going this way and on the other side, then some upside down stairs. So if we come in, we can place those against that section and two more stairs against these bookshelves like this. 
Next, we're going to wrap some stairs around. So we're going to place some stairs this direction and bring them across and bring these round to this other side to make them connect up so we can still open all of the chests. And then we're going to do the same on the other side. Just bring these right the way across like so and just bring them round to complete that. Finally on this, we are going to place ourselves the same, a rail and get ourselves a trapdoor here, which we can then place the right direction. And that is this layer done. To finish off the back part of the snail, we start with a temporary block here and we're going to place a stair against that with a slab at the back and get rid of that. We can then place ourselves an upside down stair here and a stair against either side of that. We do need another temporary block now, so we're going to just place it here on this side and we are going to curve around some more of the stairs that are just going to link up on this side, making sure we obviously get them the right way up like so. And then in this gap, again, we'll need one more temporary block because we need to place ourselves a slab, get rid of those two, come in here and finish this off with some lighting, which is just going to be a lantern hanging down in the middle. At the front section now, we are going to start by shift clicking ourselves a single crafting table on here. Then on the front side of these two bookshelves, on both sides, we're going to add ourselves some chests. Next to this crafting table, we're going to have two of the full blocks. Then we're going to have two behind each of the chests as well. And then three coming around the corner, just like so. Above the doorway, we've got ourselves an upside down stair. We've also got an upside down stair on each side in these two blocks, so the corner and the front, and then not that one, this one, the corner and the front. Here we have ourselves a right way up stair, just there with an upside down stair on the inside next to the chests. And then against these blocks, we've got right way up stairs going across just like so. Then inside the final touch is to take two dark oak slabs and run them just here. For the next layer, we're going to start by placing a double chest here and a double chest on this side as well, shift clicking to the side so we can connect it. Then using some full blocks, we're going to bring this all the way around the front with two more behind the double chest like so. Then we've got ourselves a stair going in here. And then if we come inside, we've got a stair going this way. Uh, wrong way, you just place it carefully against the edge there. And just the same on this side. Then we will also need a temporary block. So we're going to place a block here, an upside down stair here. And at this point, we also need temporary blocks on this side and this side, because we need to place our blocks, our stairs this way and this way. So they actually connect up and cover all of the gaps. We can take these out and next we just place ourselves a slab in there. Now we need to take some ladders and those are going to go up the side here with a ladder also here. The next layer starts by placing another double chest here and a double chest on this side. We're going to then place ourselves some more blocks going around the front, two more behind each chest like so. And now we're going to actually connect right the way across here with some full blocks. Here on the edge, we're going to place two upside down stairs and then coming inside the build for a second, we're going to use this full block to place ourselves a grindstone with a lantern on there. Now, if you're in bedrock, you may not be able to place the lantern, in which case just remove that and use a, a chain instead. Coming back up here, we're going to finish this off by using some dark oak trapdoors along the sides with two here like this to create ourselves a platform and then adding an additional ladder up. Next, we're gonna start with a furnace here and a furnace here, and one on the other side, so either side of the ladder. In front of those, we're gonna have three stairs that are upside down. Next to those, we're gonna have two blocks on each side like this. And with these two blocks, we're then gonna place ourselves three blocks against the other side of the furnace and using some stairs. This is a bit fiddly. We need to place an upside down stair here and then come around, place an upside down stair here. So that covers off, but also allows us, so it's an upside down stair here and one on this side. It also will allow us to open the chests beneath. Next, we've got two more full blocks on the edge on either th side, just like this. 
we've got a stair on either side here. We've got two stairs sticking out at the front. And then we've got one final stair in the middle with a slab on either side. Now we're gonna add ourselves another layer of some of these furnaces. And next to that, we're gonna get some of the blocks. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four here. One, two, three, four here as well. One on each side there. We're gonna have ourselves a step here, three going along the back and two on each side, just like so. We're gonna start with some more furnaces, this time slightly offset to the front. So two more on each side. Next to those, we're gonna have three blocks going out. So one, two, three on either side, just like this. Across the front, we're gonna have, and we'll shift click so we don't activate the furnaces, some upside down stairs going like this. In the back, we're gonna place an upside down stair on each of these furnaces with a block in the middle, and then a slab at each side, just like so. Now we're going to place ourselves a crafting table in this space here. So when we're actually using the furnaces, we've also got a crafting table nearby. On top of this, we're actually going to place a couple of blocks. So we're going to have two blocks here, and that is just so we can place then our lantern hanging down from this block. From here, we're going to place one, two, three, and four blocks coming out this way, and then the same on the other side. In between, we are going to have an upside down stair against the crafting table. We've got one block here, one block here with a full block in the middle, with the stairs that is. So that's a full block in the middle and then a stair each side. And here we've got ourselves a stair and then we're going to have an upside down stair facing this way like so. Moving on from that, round the front where we've got this section, we're going to have some mandibles coming down. So we've got some dark oak fence and you're going to have two bits of dark oak fence sticking down like so. And on the bottom of each of them, we're going to hang ourselves a lantern like this. And then for a mouth, we're going to put a crimson sign in the middle. Next, we surround these two blocks on these sides uh, with one block behind. And then we move to the stairs. We're going to place a stair each side. And then we're going to place a stair here and a stair here. So that one curves in. We'll do that on both sides. So a stair going this way and then a stair in front of it going this way. This is the level that we start the eye stalks and those are gonna be either side of these two blocks. So we'll place these two blocks. Then using the dark oak planks, we're gonna place those which are gonna be the starting point for the eye stalks. We're then gonna add ourselves some stairs going round and that is gonna be stairs like this connecting right the way around those before we place ourselves a stair this way and a stair this way on one side and a stair this way and a stair this way on the other side. Next, where this one's gone forward, we're then gonna go sideways uh, with a stair and an upside down stair before going forward again and having a trap door, which is dark oak as well there. And this one that's gone sideways, we're actually gonna reverse that and go forward here with a stair and an upside down stair before going sideways like so with ourselves having a trapdoor like this. We then finish off these stalks by placing a stair next to the trapdoor on each of these, a sea lantern against that with a trapdoor on top for both of these and then finally a polished blackstone button as the eyes and as you can see he's now got a cool little face. Now we're going to be building the big glass dome on the snail's back. But rather than using glass so you can see it more easily, I'm going to be using the light blue wool. But first of all, we're going to come round with the glass all the way round here, just like this, just following the line across and back in like so. For the next line of glass, we're going to start at this slab and we're going to start bringing that out. And we're then going to be able to bring this around all the way, just touching the edge and just adding in some blocks to allow us to keep moving around. But then we don't actually need the extra blocks themselves. So we'll just get rid of those as we go and bring it right the way around to this side just here. And then we're done with this layer as well. For this layer on each side, we're gonna have three on each of the edges. And then we're gonna come out by two here and two here to link up. So we'll have two again and two here. And then we will need some, again, a temporary block just to be able to come out on the edge and just carry that on all the way round.
Now we're going to do three layers that are absolutely identical just on top of each other. Firstly, we're going to come out by five on each edge. Then we're going to have two blocks there. And then we're going to carry that round with five here. Then two blocks and then bring this out by five for the edge. Then two here and finally the five here finishing off like this. And this is going to come up exactly the same but two blocks higher as well. Now we're going to curve the dome back over and we're going to start by replicating what we did before this three. So we're going to have the blocks coming out of the edges just here and then the three across the center on each of the sides just like so. Now we're going to connect up the blocks over each of these sections like so on all of the four sides and then we will just need one temporary block to bring a block in on each corner like this. Next we need a temporary block to start off and then we are going to run a line of these blocks all the way around just touching on the edge right the way across so it's going to be a one wide strip of these blocks that are just going to go all the way around the build like this. And finally we will take another temporary block and we will fill in this gap here which is going to be a nice big cross going right the way across the middle. And once you're done your dome will look like this. To finish off the exterior go around the build and find some random spots and then just replace some of the copper with some granite or alternatively you could use some jungle planks or a mixture of the two just to break up the copper. Now use as much of this or as little as you like, it really is up to you. With the variety of blocks mixed in, we're gonna head inside and we are going to start filling this entire dome with water. So first of all, make sure that you don't click onto either of these blocks so you waterlog them. Make sure that you also click on the full block so you don't accidentally waterlog outside of the build and then it should spread. And we're looking to bring the water up right to this level. So there's going to be an air gap right in the top of the build, but bring the water up as high as this here where you've got this sticking out block. With this area filled with water, the last thing to do is decorate the inside. And the first way that we're going to do that is by randomly placing some chests in various different places. So if you have these chests floating at different angles and different sides, just in the middle of the actual water like this obviously you can swim up to them and use them during the game so place maybe four or five chests around first of all just like i say at different heights and different distances into the actual build then we're also going to place some kelp uh, a good sprinkling of seagrass the other thing that we can do is we can place ourselves some trap doors and i'm just using jungle but you can use anything here and if you place the bottom trapdoors, you can actually place things like seagrass on them, or you can also place on sea pickles as well. So once you've placed one sea pickle, you can just put up to four around there. So yeah, decorate the interior of this and get yourself some tropical fish. Obviously you'll be using a bucket if you're in survival. And yeah, fill this up and then I'll show you the finished result. And now the build is finished. And if we take a quick look inside, we will see that we've got everything that we need for a survival base. We've got furnaces, plenty of storage, a full enchanting set up here. And then coming through here, we've got this awesome area where you can come up and look out of your base. And you've got all of your chests in here as well for your main storage and loads of life going on in here. Then we've got a little sleeping area as well with a bit more storage and everything that you could need. And by using these rails and these trapdoors, you can just pass straight through here without needing to duck ever. So I hope you've enjoyed the build. If you have, then let me know in the comments. Hit that like button. It really does help the channel. And also make sure you subscribe. If you're interested in getting hold of this world, then it is available as a download to all of my patrons. So check out details in the description. All that's left to be said is thanks very much for watching and I'll see you all next time on Adicraft.